Juju has been so good this year, though. There was an actual legitimate discussion. Has he become the number one receiver on this team compared to Antonio Brown? And that's saying a lot. Yes. Juju oh, yes. has been so good this year that he has a fat white guy stalking him. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how good he's been, folks. <laughs> The Donut Bag is brought to you by Foco.com. The holiday season is here, and Foco has all kinds of unique Pittsburgh Pirates, Steelers, and Penguins items. They're the perfect gift for all sports fans. Order today at foco.com for guaranteed shipping before Christmas. Be the MVP of gift giving this holiday season. And for a limited time, if you buy one bobblehead, you get the second one 25% off. That's www.foco.com. F O C O.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Donut Bag, part of the Pulse Podcast Network and the Pod Hub Network. In this episode, I recap the huge, huge loss to the Saints with regulars Mark Hagelauer and Coach Warzu. Oh boy, this still this one hurts. We recorded it about an hour after the game, and we were still pretty fired up. And uh, I'm still pretty fired up. It's, it's a few hours later. I'm still pretty fired up about it. Anyway, the donut bag starts right now. Steelers lose to the Saints 31-28. to With me to talk about it is Coach Warzu. How you holding up, man? I'll tell you, I, I mean, I'm actually holding up much better than my son. Uh, I mean, he's all been out of shape, but I, I think I'm actually at a loss for words with that last however many minute sequence in the fourth quarter i i still don't know what to say i think there's two reasons they lost one of them is ridley and the other is that fake punt well listen why on earth why do you put steven ridley in the game to touch the ball in your most critical play of the season why the only thing i could think is samuels was winded so they had to take him out so you put in your quote-unquote backup running back which is actually your backup to the backup to the backup to the backup but you're right just pass the damn ball at that point yeah exactly like look okay sam samuels is winded there's four other guys not named jalen samuels who i would rather have touched the ball in that situation or any critical situation than a guy who's laid it on the turf six times in the past two years. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. He has a history of fumbling. Listen, he's not a new England. You know why he's not a Patriot anymore? Because he lays the football on the carpet in critical situations. That's why he, and Belichick gave him enough chances and that was it. That's why he's not a Patriot. That was his thing fumbling and now it cost us literally could have cost us a season then you have this bonehead fake punting with four with four and some odd minutes left in the game up four points and giving drew Brees a short field at home i i don't understand i honestly don't understand the coaching decisions today i don't either i don't either i i i i that basically, my hey, hair, Mark. Hey, Mark, hey, hey Mark. Mark. we got him on video too. Oh no, that's bad. Yeah, get away. Yeah, we don't want to look at you. We don't want to get rid of that. It's pretty dark. I don't know. Mark, Wait, am Mark I on video? Has his face painted right now. I know you guys can't <laughs> yeah, see, him, but he's... he has black on one side, gold on the other, and he has Juju's number on one you side. See my car. Number on the other. <laughs> no, I do not. I'm glad it's pitch black though, so you don't have to see me. Oh, I have the Mark. Mark Madden face for radio. Listeners, don't let him fool you right now. <laughs> Look, you can see my car driving. I'm... Mark, Mark, you, you didn't have to shave your head. Come on, man. 
Uh, you do after a game like that. Holy oh God. my God! I don't know what you guys started with. So. so basically, we just started with uh, the. To, to me, I said the two reasons why they lost was Ridley and the fake punt. Uh, it's two of them, I think. That fake punt was aggressive and oh so close again, and the Ridley thing I think maybe was more so than the fake punt. The, the um, thing about the but, fake punt was if it works, it's absolute oh, it's genius. It's very ballsy. I, I mean, I like the idea to do it. I don't know if Nix is the right guy to do it with five yards, maybe two yards. I don't know, but I don't know if he, but he's normally back there, I think. So if you put anything out there, it's a little suspicious. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what a crazy, uh, you can't even, because of the, you know, earlier season letdown games, you can't really enjoy what was a really good football game. Well, to me, the the um the Oakland game looms huge yeah, and basically thing. could be the, the whole reason they don't make the playoffs. And what was the deal with the Oakland game? Ben was hurt. He could have come in. Oh yeah, and that's true. they they decided the coach decided to keep him out and they lost. That's directly on the coach. The list, Whoever I, decided to make stupid tie. The, the tie, tie too. Well, to me, the tie was. Uh, was uh, uh what's his face um boswell's fault oh, boswell yeah. and uh, as much as i love him that was also connor's fault for fumbling but still boswell had a chance to win that game and unfortunately <laughs> connor but, at least has made up for it since then but boswell really hasn't although i give him credit he was perfect tonight so yeah yeah uh oh man um well now uh, let me add, well, not to like hijack it with a question but so we have the that decision you were talking about with the raiders uh, on the coaching and the going for it on fourth down. I mean, is that how 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 much of the hot seat is Tomlin in now? I mean, if they don't make the playoffs, not at all. You don't think? I mean, I not think he's in a hot seat. I don't know if he's going to actually get fired, but I, it might be a little bit hot. And maybe this is the thing that uh that 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 gets uh Keith Butler fired. But I don't see it. Be, I don't. I I don't see Tomlin being in any jeopardy. Yeah, I can't see Tomlin being out of there. You know, and all, and all the people that are saying that, like, sorry. Well, I, I mean, I, I see it being at least eyebrow raising, if nothing else. I'm not saying he should necessarily be, and I'm not saying he will be. But at this point, I mean, there were so many. He got all the letdown game. It's a combination of everything. They're wasting all his talent right now out there. All this talent, they're underachieving like crazy. And it's usually because of one or two games where they may not get a buy or they may not make the playoffs. I mean, at least I think he should should be on the hot seat. The thing that oh, he should be. You're right. Should be. Yeah. Should but be. he won't. It's not. It's not for the quote unquote Steelers way. And I mean, in you know, in his oh, defense, the guy's never had a losing season. So yeah. you know, it's kind of hard to say, hey, you're fired. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. With with yeah, all the some... talents that they have, that they have massively underachieved. You know, I mean, how many times have you had? I, I think I asked this once. When you have the one of the best quarterbacks, best wide receiver, and best running back in the league, and you don't, you, you, you fail this bad. The last time I know of this happening was those Colts teams with uh, Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, yeah. and Edward Payne. That was about it. Yeah, and it was sort of a si- similar situation with those teams where a couple of the years they just didn't have the defense to pull it off. But this year, I mean, I don't know. I don't really blame the defense all that much in this game. I mean, I guess they had the lead and they let it up, but they I don't blame well, the defense. I think, most it, of the second it, half. How ironic is it that those teams that underachieved were coached by who? Tomlin's mentor, Tony Dungy. Oh, like look at that. It's coming full circle. I like it. Tony Dungy's teams were notorious for underachieving. They would get to a certain point, like in the of each of reach success, and then they would just, just crap out. Uh, so yeah, yeah, that, that's a good point. But that's that's what's so frustrating. Last week they just they just I don't want to say dominated New England, but they they handily Basically beat they them. They controlled the game at least. And for them to go into New Orleans, I guess, that well, yeah. and that team is really good. I mean, Drew Brees showed why he's one of the best. That offense is amazing. The defense is very good. They were at home. Oh, and they had the refs um, on their side, oh, too. Yeah, the home re- homer refs that uh, had the yeah, it was bad. Of what, like 80% it was... of the calls. That's insane to me that they would let, like, if you go through a season and you see something that lopsided, 
not want to send them aside or take them off the roster of coaching. I mean, refing the games because you can't be making. I mean, I could see 60 40, but early on, that one, that, that pass interference call was almost like it's just one of those things. It's like the whole season was filled with close plays like that that were either bounced out of bounds in the end zone or things like that. So the pass interference call. Uh, that was that was uh, New Orleans' first touchdown. Yeah, they put it on the one, so they basically got it. I don't know. If that yeah, was third yeah, down or basically, not. yeah. Um, yeah, that was third down. That was, that was a good. that was a play where other referees, people that used to be referees, stated, "What are they doing? That's not a that's not a uh, th- that's not a uh, pass interference. What are they doing? That's pathetic." And then what about the whole, like, and that was not catchable for any, imagine, it was Will Chamberlain with Michael Jordan jump, couldn't have caught that. So what happened to the whole, like, it was over his head type of thing, they don't call it. That, that angered me just as much as the, the back call. Here's what, here's what Gene Steratore said. Even though Joe Hayden did have a hand on the receiver prior to the ball being there, he should not have been penalized for pass interference on this play. This contact did not affect the receiver and is not severe enough to warrant a flag. They basically handed the Saints a touchdown there. And it wasn't the only call that went the Saints' way. I'm not blaming the, the referees. I'm not blaming the officiating for the Steelers' oh, no, no, loss. No, no, but but you have to – you go into New Orleans – the best they have the best record in the league. They have a great team. You play and you play them on their turf and you go toe to toe with them. And oh. and this is the kind of crap you have to deal with also. Ridiculous. And they what? still almost say overcame it. And then you can overcome the uh, yeah, and then you overcome that, you take the lead, but at the end of the game at the end of the day, you lose by what, four? And then or three, and then they, you know, that would have put them over the top. It would have been up that would one one touchdown less at least. They played out the rest of the way like so I know I, I yeah the frustration is definitely there I think for everyone that watched that not the reason they lost but it makes it a lot more frustrating and here's what what really angers me is this team has a chance to go far in the playoffs under the right circumstances look at the other teams in the AFC they all have flaws oh yeah they could they could take care of uh I I would I, I would I would bet on the Steelers over uh, the Chargers. They could beat the Patriots. They can, be, they can hang with KC and beat them. They, they could hang with KC, yeah. Um Houston, I'm not sure about, maybe, probably. But every team is has has flaws, but they're they might not make the playoffs. And it's just crazy. It's so frustrating. Coach, where are you? I need you. Oh, I'm still here. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm down. Nah, it's just a tough, it's going to be a tough spot just having to rely on you know, somebody else. It just eerily, this has that that feeling of, I don't know how many years ago that was, where uh, the Chiefs kicker missed the, what was that, a 19 yard field goal or oh, something? Yeah. That would have sent the Steelers in on, you know, because there was some three-way tie or four-way tie. I, I remember it, that, yeah. It, I, I just hate relying on help from other teams. Here's what we need to do. We need to adopt a Browns fan. Find somebody. I'm sure we all know somebody who likes the Browns. Adopt them. Give them a present. Send them good vibes. Something. We not, We all need to become Browns fans for next week. And this will be like the Browns Super Bowl, so they'll be fired up. And I mean, the Ravens are hard to beat at home, but Browns are going to make it hard, at least at the very least. Listen, Cleveland, they so took open. your team. Remember that they stole your team. Yes, exactly. Get that Art Modell anger back in you. Yeah. Oh man, it's crazy. It's come full circle, isn't it? Strange. We had that tie against the Browns, and now it's come. All I right know. We We're Browns in this win. situation because of the Browns. Now. <laughs> I mean, you lose four out of your four out of your last five. I mean, yeah, that's the biggest thing is uh, losing the three other ones. Not so much the Saints game, and like I said, I think the whole anger towards everything is really undermining a pretty good effort and a very good game in second half. I mean, they played pretty good. A couple mistakes and uh, away from probably winning. Uh, definitely, the fumbles didn't help in the second half. Ben was fantastic. The other AB thing was fantastic. 
the other thing that absolutely killed them was I think it was 